Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be going over 10 reasons why your retinol is not working. This video is in response to comments I get all of the time here on YouTube, over on Instagram, as well as TikTok. Hey, I've been using retinol, it's not working. Before bailing on your retinol, make sure you watch this video to the end because I'm gonna be giving you a lot of possible reasons why this popular, highly touted ingredient is simply not cutting it for you. Number one is you have not been using it long enough. Enough. Prescription and over-the-counter forms of retinol take time to work and you have to use them consistently. This can be a hurdle because in the beginning they are very irritating. On average, it takes roughly three months to begin to start to see results from a prescription retinoid or over-the-counter adapalene, which is a retinoid. And results is gonna vary depending on what it is you are pursuing these for. If it's acne, that is what you can expect. But for wrinkles, fine lines, it's gonna take longer. Remember, these ingredients are working in the deeper layers to boost up collagen production and smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. That takes more time. In contrast to the prescription stuff or adapalene, brand name different, retinols, which are all the other things that you can buy without a prescription, they take even longer to start seeing results because your skin has to convert them to their active form, to retinoic acid, and that takes time. So on average, it takes roughly six months depending on the form of retinol that you are using. Number two, I've been using retinol and I think my fine lines and wrinkles look worse. This is a comment I get a lot. And the reason this may be the case is because in the beginning, especially retinol and prescription retinoids can be incredibly drying. And as they dry out the skin, wrinkles are gonna become more noticeable. This is especially the case around the eyes. And it can be very irritating there and that actually can end up making the wrinkles look worse. To be clear, however, the ingredient retinol, it's not causing wrinkles, it's just making your skin dry. And when the skin is dry, wrinkles become more obvious. This is why moisturizers are so important to your retinol journey. They help to pull moisture into the top layers of the skin, plumping up skin cells, and not only does that create the cosmetic benefit of smoothing out wrinkles and fine lines, but it helps you tolerate the retinol better. And it also helps support your skin barrier and the skin's natural exfoliation processes. By pulling water into the skin, the enzymes there can function better. Reason number three is that you're not being consistent with it. You're just using it sporadically. I think this is very common, even maybe more common than people might be willing to accept because honestly, it's really hard to stay consistent with a topical skincare ingredient and use it every single day or every other day. Inevitably, with time, people, they start slacking. It happens with the prescription stuff and it happens with stuff that you buy over the counter. I mean, for this very reason, this is why the skincare market is so successful and such a lucrative industry is because people get bored or people lose track and they they don't they stop complying with time you have to be consistent in order for it to work retinol does not work on an as needed basis it's not a spot treatment meaning if you are using it say for acne you get a pimple and you're like oh hey i've got this retinol i'm gonna start using it it's not gonna take the pimple away any faster it's kind of got to build up in the skin and begin to make a difference on how those skin cells behave in order to affect change for your acne with retinol, you don't necessarily have to use it every day in order for it to work. As a matter of fact, in the beginning, we often encourage people to introduce the ingredient very slowly, using it maybe once a week, then bumping up to every other day, and then eventually daily. But if you stick with it, using it like every other day, you definitely can get benefit. It just takes longer to see results. All right, number four is a comment I see a lot. I've been using retinol and I think it's making my skin darker. I'm seeing more hyperpigmentation. Isn't this supposed to help hyperpigmentation? Why is it getting worse? One of two possible reasons for that. Hyperpigmentation can be present in different layers of the skin. Now retinol, it's going to help with smoothing out the very top layer of the skin and helping to bring up cells to the top and clear out any superficial hyperpigmentation. But as it's doing that and as it's leveling the playing field, 
Well, pigment that's down deeper is actually oftentimes going to be more noticeable. And that pigment takes a very long time to clear. And many times, depending on the nature of the hyperpigmentation, things like laser treatments or prescription hydroquinone treatments are necessary in order to actually effectively clear that. So to be clear, while topical retinol certainly can help in clearing existing hyperpigmentation and preventing further worsening of hyperpigmentation, they may not be targeting all aspects of your hyperpigmentation, depending on the level of the skin where it exists. And the other reason why you may notice worsening of hyperpigmentation, and definitely one to put the brakes on, is if the product is too irritating. This is especially the case if you have a deeper skin tone. Anything that you put on your skin that causes excessive irritation can worsen hyperpigmentation. For this reason, and people with deeper skin tones, we usually give prescription retinoids in a more conservative fashion, maybe starting out at a lower percentage strength, encouraging the patient to introduce it more slowly so as to not cause unnecessary irritation that could end up worsening their hyperpigmentation. Number five is a comment I also see a lot. Hey, I've been using uh, like Differin or Tretinoin or name your favorite form of topical vitamin A here. And my pores look larger. Isn't this supposed to help diminish the appearance of pores? Pores can become larger as a result of sun damage. Some people just have genetically oilier skin, that large oil gland makes for a dilated pore. And while retinol can help minimize oiliness and help normalize the lining of the pore to reduce pore clogging, it's thinning out that top dead layer of the skin. And as it does that, and smooths everything out, well, your pores become more obvious. It's not that the retinol is enlarging them. It's just that prior to using retinol, you had all this heaped up uneven buildup on top of them that kind of camouflaged their appearance just by light scattering. Retinol has the potential to ultimately improve the appearance of your pores by improving the structure of the deeper layers of the skin. Ultimately, that provides more support around the pore and can help in minimizing overall pore appearance. Number six perceived failure of retinol is, hey, my acne is getting worse. Prescription retinoids and over-the-counter adapalene, these are FDA approved treatments for acne that are game changers for the treatment of acne. But a lot of people notice that when they start using them, they get a lot more acne. Now, this is called purging. It typically lasts a few weeks. At most, it's gonna last four to six weeks. Because retinol increases skin cells turnover, what happens in the beginning, in the first few weeks, is that any acne that you have below the skin surface will appear all at once. And so you'll notice an increase in number of acne spots, and those tend to go away a lot faster than your typical acne. But this doesn't last more than a few weeks honestly in most cases at most four to six weeks and then it's over what's more common though and a possible reason for worsening acne especially beyond this four to six week window is simply irritation from the topical retinoid anything that causes irritation Again, it can worsen hyperpigmentation, but it also can aggravate your acne. In my video on purging versus irritation, I go through the differences between these two in more detail, and I give tips on how to avoid both of them. So I'm gonna link that video down below in the description box, but it is not uncommon in the first few weeks of starting a topical retinol or retinoid to experience an increase in the number of acne spots that you get. It's just the acne that is beneath the surface appearing. Okay, number seven, using a retinol and your face looks oilier. What the heck? This is supposed to be helpful for acne. Why does my face look so shiny? Okay, there are a few reasons for this. Number one is the vehicle that your retinoid or retinol is in. The cream vehicle for some people with oily skin makes them look shinier and they prefer a gel vehicle. Gel vehicles are a lot more fast absorbing. They help minimize shine and reduce the appearance of oiliness on the surface of the skin. So it may be as simple if it's a prescription, um, calling your dermatologist, explaining to them that you know you don't like the shiny appearance, and they may be able to switch you to a different vehicle that is more preferable to you for your skin type. But to be clear, retinol does not increase sebum production, aka oil. That is largely governed by things like your hormones, it's not that the retinol is truly increasing the rate of sebum output onto the surface of the skin. The other possibility here is that, again, the retinol, it levels out and kind of thins that top dead layer of the skin. And to be clear, retinols do not 
thin the skin. They don't cause skin atrophy, but they do level out the top dead layer of the skin. They just kind of smooth everything out. And as they do that, well, the oil that comes out of your pore, it is gonna come out and be on a more level playing field. And that can give your skin just a shinier look. Now you have fewer hills and valleys to kind of mask the accumulation of oil on the surface of your skin. And you also could consider using a clay mask to absorb some of the excess shine from the surface of the skin. I have a video on clay masks, but do know that uh, it's not that the retinol actually increases the production of oil. All right, number eight is from a group of people who comment, I'm using retinol or prescription retinoid kind of because I feel like I'm supposed to, but I don't know, I don't see any difference. I didn't have acne to begin with. I'm not using it as an acne treatment. I, I don't really see a difference. Is this worth it? And the answer is yes. Just because you don't necessarily see a difference doesn't mean the ingredient is not working in your favor. Retinoids with long-term consistent use, they minimize sun damage when used in conjunction with sun protective behaviors. They help inhibit the upregulation of enzymes that destroy collagen in the deeper layers of the skin. And they also may help reduce the formation of little pre-skin cancers when used consistently, especially if you are at risk for forming those. So just because you don't appreciate any cosmetic benefit, it doesn't mean that it's not a beneficial ingredient to continue to use in your routine, so long as it's not causing your skin any problems. I hear you though, you know, it's not necessarily an inexpensive ingredient to use, but don't bail on it solely because you don't perceive a change in your skin, because it can benefit your skin in the long run by doing all of these things to help improve the function of the cells in your skin. Number nine is a comment I see a fair amount. I started using retinol and I really do not see any change in my acne. One possible reason for this is that you are using an over-the-counter cosmetic retinol and you're not using a retinoid. Now retinols, as I mentioned earlier, they, your skin has to convert them to the active form. Whereas retinols like adapalene or prescription tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine, these are already in their active form. They're already active medications. Your skin doesn't have to work on them in order for them to work. Retinol that you buy without a prescription, aside from adapalene, it's not really evidence-based per se for treating acne. Um, it's, it's not FDA approved for sure for treating acne. And there's a lot of variability with over-the-counter retinols that are not adapalene. Adapalene is, is, at least for acne, adapalene is the most straightforward, evidence-based, effective form of retinol that you can buy without a prescription, but everything else is highly variable and is not truly evidence-based for treating acne. It can help improve the look of wrinkles and fine lines. It can help boost up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, and it may help in removing some sun damage. But those other ingredients, because they're cosmetics, they're not drugs, there's a lot of variability. They're not actually required to demonstrate efficacy of their product in terms of these endpoints that you may be seeking. And they're not truly a treatment for acne. They're just cosmetic anti-wrinkle ingredients. And that's not to say that they can't be beneficial. And that's not to say that they don't help some people's acne, they certainly do. But for a lot of people, I would say the majority of people with acne, a retinol that you can buy without a prescription, aside from adapalene, is likely not going to be sufficient to, to help out your acne. I mean, they're not really considered acne treatments. Um, so it could just be as simple as the fact that you need to graduate onto something more prescription strength. And in that case, you know, see a board certified dermatologist or your, or your primary care doctor for a prescription or consider the over-the-counter retinoid that is FDA approved for acne, Adapalene, which is sold under the brand names of like Differin. Um, CVS has an Adapalene. La Roche-Posay has an Adapalene. All right, and then finally, say you're using those things. This is another another common thing. I'm using adapalene, or I've been using prescription tretinoin, or prescription tazeratine, or prescription triferritine, and my acne is not better, or it was okay, but I'm still breaking out. Is it not working? Did it stop working? So the retinoid does not stop working, but in many cases, a topical retinoid alone is just not sufficient to control all types of acne. 
In many cases, topicals alone are just not enough. You may need to follow up with, with your dermatologist and see if there's not some other prescription that can be added to your treatment to get better results. So before bailing on it, definitely give them a call, say, hey, um, you know, I'm still breaking out, it's been this long, can I see you again? Because a lot of times, something may be added that can get you to where you need to be. A lot of times it's just not enough to use retinoid alone, but continue to use the retinoid, you're likely to get better responses when other treatments are added on. So rather than just stopping it because you don't perceive any benefit, you haven't noticed any change in your acne, definitely follow up with your dermatologist to make sure that there isn't something else that could be added to get you better control. We have a lot of oral medications, topical medications that can be used alongside a prescription retinoid to get better results. So don't suffer in silence. Don't just go to the internet and you know ask a bunch of skincare influencers what you should do. Um, really, you need to talk to your actual doctor about how to treat your acne. All right, y'all, those are 10 reasons why retinol is failing. <laughs> so don't bail on it without, again, talking to your doctor. Don't give up. It's definitely a beneficial ingredient. I hope this video was helpful in clarifying some of the common reasons why people may feel like throwing in the towel with it. On the insulate, I'm going to put my last video addressing popular myths about retinol. So definitely check that out, especially if you are new to this ingredient. And I also have a whole playlist on retinol, explaining the differences between the different forms, going over skincare products, and answering a lot of common questions. So check all those videos out, but if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.